Oh my god, no way! I actually, actually posted this question! So yesterday we've had an interview, uh, it was the consecrated interview with Ian as a Costas. Now it wasn't an actual interview, it was a lot of questions that were being submitted with the moderator that was post posing the questions for for Ian and Ian answering those questions. I don't, obviously he probably wouldn't have had time to get, to get through all of the questions, but a couple of major stuff has been written down and articled about in terms of the interview. There are, there are a couple of highlights. So earlier today, you content creators participated in a patch 1007 group interview with game director Ian Hazakosis, which included discussions on profession, catch up, work orders, primordial stones, balancing and more. All right, let's see some of the highlights. Primordial stones, this is what's coming with 1007. Ian reiterates that the goal for the Onyx Annulet, not Amulets, because uh, you might think that it's an amulet, but it's an annulet, which, uh, you know, might sound the same because it's probably the same. This is basically a Lariat version of a ring. It's a ring that you will uh, you will loot. We've uh, we've done a video about it. In uh, the Forbidden Reach, you'll have a Torghast style content, which is not necessarily Torghast. It's a, it's a repeatable vault thing where you can go and just dig for treasures and kill some rares and do some stuff. And you have this this ring that can be socketed with like three specific gems that give you certain mechanics. They're not like gems that give you stats, but they give you oh, you can proc some AOE damage or AOE absorb or some heal or some other stuff, right? There's kind of like a trinket within a ring thing, and you can mix and match the the stones in in the sockets and get your ideal effects out right some of them are going to be stronger some of them are going to be weaker and you have to constantly refarm them if you kind of replace them because they get destroyed unless they go back on it i haven't read to see if this is something that they address but during our testing they get replaced uh, if uh, and destroyed if you constantly put in because there's like 16 or there were at least 16 at one point i don't know if there are more than this 16 total gems that you can put in so obviously there's a bunch of mix ma ma matching and they weren't particularly strong at the time and i think they mentioned is that they wanted they don't want it to be strong but let's see exactly what ian has to say so ian reiterates that the goal for the onyx annulet is that it should be an upgrade for everyone with players replacing it in season two so it's not gonna carry on through season two or at least not through the entire of the season which is a which is a good thing and i think adding this stuff halfway through the season patch is actually really cool because we farmed our gear we did our raids in our dungeons and oh we now have a new ring to kind of test out and play with with some cool effect it kind of keeps up the, the the replayability and the refresh aspect of the game which i think it's cool some specs such as beast master hunters due to the way pet damage works and some bonuses not applying to pets don't have the amulet as worth using over current items and they are digging into it they are also looking for feedback on other specs that are currently saying it's not currently an upgrade actually so it's it's on the other side of the spectrum it can actually not be worth for some specs you want to fix that since it's meant to be an upgrade over current gear all right so a bunch of these effects if i recall i don't know them by heart but a bunch of these effects happen based on your spells that you launch and so on and so forth and seeing as how beast masteries the majority of the damage profile comes from your pet interacting with your target and not you necessarily kill command makes your pet do the damage not your character although i don't know how the game sees that because obviously it's you by the end of the day uh, there's a bunch of stuff that happens so i assume that's where the issue is and they are looking into it and that's actually great because it would kind of suck not to to be a bm and not to be able to use this if they need to buff things in order to make sure that it happens, they will. And if season two comes around and the ring is still best in slot, they will reign in the power according. So, okay, so it's likely that even if your class sees this as a major, major upgrade and you're like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. It will probably get nerfed in season two. So people who are, who might find themselves in that situation, just keep that in mind, I suppose, that it, it will most likely get nerfed. Professions. Catch up in professions is something that they're continuing to discuss. They want to make sure that someone who picks up a new profession doesn't feel hopelessly behind and there is a reasonable path towards catch up. This is, you know, for people starting playing now and they don't have all the profession knowledge and all of that. However, there is no catch up for the full suit of profession mastery and the person who has been working on their profession since day one will have more options at, uh, at the max proficiency. But if you want to make a specific recipe, it is readily achievable goal. Okay, that's good. So I'm assuming that the deeper diving into the uh, the mastery of, you know, crafting the, the Venom Stomper boots or the Flaring Cowl or all of that is not as easily... Because obviously if you've worked on a profession since day one, it would kind of suck if somebody came in today and in like three days they would catch up and be able to put out, put out the same level of craft material and 
uh, items that you can. It will feel a little bit, a little bit dissatisfying. So I get that. Work orders are server based is to allow for people to establish reputations and to specialize and diversify. Everyone knows who the first person who could make the elements lariat on the server was. That person had a very good and profitable experience. If things were not server based, suddenly you don't get that feeling of being special or anyone knowing your name or giving you a personal order because the ecosystem is much larger. Um, I agree. I, I don't particularly mind this being server based. I have my, my Lara Crafters, my Blacksmith, which is actually Marcellian, and that's not that's not the bad. I, I'm not opposed to, you know, being server specific. They are looking at solutions to the work order space and the leading contender is NPC work orders. NPCs periodically posting their proficient work orders on the market, which aren't going to be the very best, but a good baseline. This is probably helpful to level up skills for professions that cannot level up this skills because I know as a leather worker unless you have the reputation you don't have the recipes you have to have somebody propose work orders for you to level up leather working if you want to fill a work order to get a skill up and complete your uh, quest there should be a way to do it but right now the interface just being empty isn't a good experience for everyone I do agree it requires new technology but it's something they want to do in dragonfly that's great if they keep iterating on this system of professions they keep improving it patch by patch by the end we might actually have a really good system that we can kind of finally take into future expansions as well and make professions matter again super stoked that they're they're really aware and they're not just ready to give this up it's like mm, we tried in dragonfly we're just gonna go a different way because constantly reiterating on all the system is a little bit uh. class bounce and tuning now ladies and gentlemen we've just talked about the red nerfs after the red buffs but actually the red nerfs before the red buffs shadow priests have significant changes coming in patch 10.1 all right I don't know what this has to do with class balance or tuning. The level of rework that went into Red Paladin is not something other specs are likely to see over the course of the rest of the expansion. Okay. Kind of wanted to see something like that for survival. Class changes will still occur alongside life tuning, but not necessarily an overhaul. That doesn't necessarily mean that they won't do it. That just means that they want they don't want people to expect a rework if something goes wrong because obviously this is one of the first reactions and I, I can bet your butt that one of the first reactions of the people that noticed the red rework were like well i want to rework too i want to rework too right because that's what i thought about when i was playing so i was like okay are they going to do a survival rework as well that's not the point of the rework right for everybody to just don't like their thing just get a rework and that solves everything so i'm i'm kind of hoping that that's the, the the mentality behind their response or you know behind ian's response but i do hope that when things are looking bad for spec they will be addressed doesn't matter doesn't have to be a rework because retribution is the only dps option for paladins they want to make sure it's solid that's very fair Ian thinks there is likely more tuning to go out alongside the 1007 patch. Okay, but I mean, that's kind of what we expected. There are no plans to standardize special items like the Evoker Staff, Carnalex, the First Light. They do this where it makes sense to have bosses drop weapons or other things that are flavorful or themed to a single class like the Dagger or Legendary Bow from Sylvanas. Evokers will probably be interested in what Commander Sarkath may have for them when we get there, though. This would be in the... In the 1007. They've talked about special class items a whole number of times. I don't think it's worth going into them as well. We know exactly what they're looking for. These are supposed to be flavor items. They don't want them to be as extremely powerful, aka why they're nerfing the, the beast mask. Well, not the beast, the hunter bow, right? Uh, this is not particularly strong. It's good. It's good single target. It has close to no implications in AoE. So it's not like, oh, you once you loot this, you're done. You're, you can take it everywhere. And as far as preservation goes, because obviously I'm a preservation main, this is probably not better than an uh, eye level upgrade of a similar staff, right? Unless, you, unless I want, as a preservation, I just want the boss damage and I need to pump in as much damage to the boss. Otherwise, I probably go for like a 390, a 400 eye level Stat, uh, sta staff with just better stats. Rate. They think that Season 4 in Shadowlands was successful. Yes! And they are likely to do something similar at the end of Dragonfly. Oh my god! No way! I actually, actually posted this question. The question that I posted was... Um, oh, do I have it written somewhere? I don't think so. But it was addressing that Season 4 faded was by and large a positive a positive reception for players uh people loved doing all the raids there was a, a variety there was more evergreen content because you could do natria again you can do all of the raids for a long time and i think that was a, that was a positive experience and my question was uh did they learn anything that they can use 
or that they will that they plan to use uh, from that faded faded experience into future future patches. This I don't know if anybody else did this question because I don't know if it's mine. Clearly, I wasn't there in the in the Q and A, but if it is, this is but this is my question. <laughs> They think that season four in Shadowlands was successful and they are likely to do something similar at the end of Dragonflight. They're not sure if the faded structure affixes were necessary though. The affixes, okay, uh, sure, I, I see that. And want to hear discussions on that as would just running the grand tour of all the expansion raids be better than just running Sepulchre for just three more months. The updates and reasons to revisit all raids with updated rewards felt like a nice alternative than just the final raid for several more months, okay. They are likely to do something similar at the end of Dragonflight. Yes! Okay, so the, so the way that they're looking at this is it's something to do while we're waiting for the new expansion, right? So they're not going to do it in the last patch. Like, oh, uh, 10.4, we're going to have a new raid plus all the other raids so far. And if we're going to assume that we're going to have four seasons, proper seasons, that means the fourth raid tier, we're going to have three extra raids that means one extra raid than we had in shillings because shillings we only had three total but now we'll have four total so that's one extra raid that could be cool they heard over the course of Shadowlands that some of the raid tiers were just exhausting partially due to tuning sepulcher but progression through raids of a certain size starts to have diminishing returns and more isn't always better more isn't always better that is that is true and if they keep the raids moderately shorter sepulcher had 11 bosses right so sanctum was a big raid uh sepulcher was a big raid with a lot of bosses 10 bosses in athria uh 11 in sanctum and i think 11 in sepulcher so that was, that was like a 33 boss uh expansion right but now we have how many of them now do we have like eight and I think it's eight for um, Aberus as well. Anyway, it's fewer bosses now, right? So even if we do end up with four, four raid tiers, I think it's going to be slightly better. Obviously, it's still going to be more bosses in the end, but the raids are not heavier. They're not longer. And I think this might actually be for the better because we can do the raid faster and there's more choices of content. First of all, we have the raids and uh, we have the dungeons. We have the... Uh, you know the example now stuff like time walking like uh the trading post like all the little bits and things that they keep adding as many mini subtle content like the the, the torghast tower in in forbidden reach and all of that and i think that's better to have multiple choices and don't feel locked into like four to six hours raid nights per week of like multiple raids and i think that's good yes ptr testing and secret they have considered giving certain rewards to players who test things Ooh. Ooh, but it would require a public beta. Currently, WoW betas are invite only and that feels unfit. But this is beta. Feels unfair and wrong if they were to give special rewards. If they have something that requires a lot of testing and to make sure it's going to be a good experience, then it's something they definitely consider. Wait a minute. Can cannot everybody just join the 10.1 PTR? Isn't that open to everybody? This says PTR, but this says beta. Okay, I get it for beta. Betas are invite only. Up to a point until they just open it for everybody. But PTR is open to everybody, right? There is content that is encrypted on the 1007 PTR. Okay, well, that's not necessarily new, right? They've encrypted at least cinematics before. Blizzard trying to keep as much as they can secret, not necessarily in the Jeremy Fiesel big secret sense. Even just things that are unexpected that haven't been seen. Okay, they, they want every patch release to have some secrets and the Forbidden Reach is a place that is right for exploration and things to uncover. Okay, I agree. We shouldn't, like, things that don't necessarily need to be tested, like cinematics, right? Or cutscenes, which is, a, you know, a poor example because that's there's nothing to test there. Uh, I think they shouldn't be put up, up on the PTR. Returning cosmetic items. Oh, people have lost, have lost it over this. They want to add ways to get appearances that exist in the game that are no longer available, have never been available back into players' hands. They want to hopefully uh, get to a point where there are no, no remaining things in the backlog, other than ones that are very deliberately no longer available, like, like the corrupted Ashbringer, which I guess that's fine. Although, Jesus, this is so cool. I am, of course, thinking of the uh, Tier 3 Warrior Dreadnought set, which is my favorite all-time plane set that I was never able to get because I didn't play back in the day. And I've always wanted it. I felt that was really a really cool playset. All the rewards for Recruit a Friend are reasonably likely to show up in the trading post. The trading post is a good outlet for all promotional assets and things that were available from other sources. If you already have them or they don't interest you, just spend your trading tenders elsewhere. All right. 
this is actually really good. The trading post does offer them a lot of options to, to flesh out the content. I do think that this month has been the first, I think this month, um, and I might might be wrong, but I believe that this month has been particularly difficult to get um, a lot of items from the trading tent. I think the prices in all of them were a lot higher. So either they uh, they make it so that you can get, I don't know, about like 80%. I think if you can buy 80% of traders items and 10% you freeze or one of them you freeze and the rest you lose, I think that's fine. I think because this month, I think I was only able to get like half of the things that I wanted because just the things that I wanted just happened to be way more expensive. This month didn't feel good for me as uh, in the trading uh, trading post. It felt like I wanted a lot more and I couldn't. I, I'm fine with sacrificing one or two things, but I think I had to sacrifice half of it and that didn't feel good. So I hope that they keep revisiting the trading post and they make stuff because there's a lot of stuff, right? And if you missed it, you might think, oh, maybe I can catch it when it comes back. But think about the amount of mods and transmogs that exist in the world that, that will probably be in the trading post. And you can only get them once per month. How many years would it take? That If you if, if we get into that realm, I think that that could be problematic. So I hope they don't go there. Miscellaneous character customization is an ongoing project and they want to keep rolling out more options for all races. I mean, didn't they just add like a whole bunch of hair colors for orcs in 1007? So yeah, I don't think that's particularly new or surprising in any way all right well this is all good we're waiting for more stuff to be to be said about it this is a good thing that they're doing a 1007 interview more of this please yes 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 i've been loving it then i still love it now still i play wow still i play wow getting better every day let me show you how because still i play wow still i play wow it's getting harder to stay but at the end of the day it's a guilty pleasure so just log in and play whether it's classical retail i'ma do a slash bow still i play wow